Today, we're cracking the code on Zener diodes. Without clear markings, they are masters in keeping their voltage values a secret. But not for long. Today, we're building a USB-powered tester to reveal their secrets. You can build it with an Arduino and nine components. Before we start building, let me explain how to use it. Here's a known Zener diode. Connect the tester. 47 volts. Here's a random COB module. 30 volts. A low voltage bipolar transistor. Thirty nine point two volts. Your mother in law. Seventy three volts. Here you see the schematic. This is a boost converter. The Arduino provides five volt and a PWM signal to the transistor. When the transistor is on, a current will flow through the choke and the transistor. Now when the transistor shuts down, the magnetic energy on the choke needs to go somewhere. And the only path it can find is via the diode and the capacitor. This way the capacitor gets charged step by step. If you want to know more about boost converters, check my video about it. I will leave a link in the description. Now this diode looks a bit strange. It's a Zener diode. This is to limit the output voltage. If the transistor is on, the Zener is connected in parallel with the capacitor. So the capacitor can never be more than 75 volts. The output current is very limited, in the milliamps. This capacitor is charged to about 75 volts. If you connect a Zener diode on the output, the voltage will drop. The Arduino will measure the voltage via the analog pin A0 and display it on the OLED display. The 4K7 resistor is to limit the current if the voltage goes lower than 5 volts. This is a boost converter and it cannot reduce the voltage. That means that if you go below 5 volt on the output, you will short the 5 volt supply from the Arduino. The capacitor needs to be a high voltage type, at least 100 volts. The same for the transistor. I use a 2N5551, which has a maximum voltage of 160 volts. I also tried an MPS A42 of 300 volts, that one also works fine. Now let me show you how to build it. You can build the circuit on a prototyping board. The placement is like in the schematic. I will leave a link in the description with the schematic and this board setup. Then connect the circuit to the Arduino 5 volt, PWM, ground and the analog input. Finally, connect the OLED display as shown in this table. The PCB will look like this. I recommend to use two female headers to mount the Arduino, so you can remove it anytime. Now before you power it up, you need to program the Arduino. Let me show you the Arduino code. Here's the Arduino code. You will need to install two libraries. U8G2 for the display and Timer1 for the PWM signal. For this go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. Then search timer1 and install this one from Paul Stoffregen. Then for the next one search U8G2. And install the U8G2 library from Oliver. The next line is to specify the OLED display and the orientation. Then here we have two floating points for a one-time calibration. 
This is to compensate for all tolerances in the circuit. I will show you later how to do that. This line calculates the factor for the voltage divider of 2K2 and 220K and the calibration. And this is the internal reference voltage of the Arduino. It is different for each Arduino, but it's very stable. The calibration will compensate for all tolerances. Then here we enter setup. We start the serial monitor. So if you do not have an OLED display, you can read the voltage values in the serial monitor. Here we set the analog input reference to the internal 1.1 volt reference of the Arduino. And we start the display. In these three lines, we generate a 31 kHz 70% duty cycle PWM signal on digital output D9 to drive the boost converter. Now we enter the loop. We read the voltage on analog input A0 and then calculate the actual voltage. We wait 500 milliseconds and here we write the results to the OLED display. And we write the same to the serial monitor. Now let me show you how to do the calibration. To make the Arduino voltage readings accurate, you need to do a one-time calibration. Here you see the Arduino code, the Zener tester and my multimeter connected to the output. I now power up the Zener tester. You see in the code it still has the default values of 75 volts. The multimeter reads 72 volts. Let me enter that. 72.0 and the OLED display shows 73.2 volts. 73.2. Now I upload the code with the new values. And you see the reading of the OLED is now 72 volts, the same as the multimeter. Now this is a very simple circuit, so there is some voltage current dependency. I measure the output current of the circuit at different voltages. The current reduces at higher output voltage. This makes sense because we have a constant on time. So every cycle an energy of a half Li square is transferred by the choke. So it's more a constant power source. You can see that the power is quite stable around 50 milliwatts from 12 to 60 volts. Now 70 volt is already quite a high voltage. The power is very low, but still be careful. If you do need more voltage, I will show you how you can boost the circuit up to about 100 volts. Here's the schematic for 100 volts. First, you need to change the diode and the capacitor to higher voltage types, 200 volts. The transistor can work up to 160 volts, so that one is still okay. Then, to limit the voltage, add two Zener diodes of 56 volts in series. With this, you'll reach about 110 volts. Now, with your new USB power tester, Zener mysteries are a thing of the past. With an Arduino and a handful of components, we finally say goodbye to guessing games. And if 70 volts is not enough, with a few tweaks you can supercharge it to 110 volts. I hope this video was useful for you. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and leave your experiences and tips in the comments.